that one time Venom predicted the future of gaming. Hey, Chris Baker here with a little something about Venom and video games that has nothing to do with Marvel's Spider-Man 2, the hot new release coming out when I'm dropping this video. I actually ran this entire script by my friends at the Player One podcast about a year ago, and I'll cut to them when it's entertaining to me or to hear their stellar voice acting. Here we go. In 1995, Marvel released a four-part limited series called Venom, Carnage Unleashed. It's absolutely ridiculous and unapologetically 90s. But it also predicted two, arguably three, different aspects of modern gaming that didn't really exist back then, at least as far as I know. This is a story by Larry Hama, who's probably best known as the guy who basically created the lore behind G.I. Joe's 80s resurgence. He also wrote a lot of Wolverine, including the game X2 Wolverine's Revenge. And he's just an all-around very well-known and respected writer but not for this one. Before we talk about what this series did to predict the future of gaming, let's quickly recap what actually happens in the story, which completely revolves around what the world thought the internet was going to be for gaming in early 1995. Personally, I would still be several months away from going online, back when that word had a hyphen in it like you see in this story. They even refer to playing games on the internet as playing games on the ethernet, which may not technically be wrong, but it's still just kind of weird. So here's the short version of what happens in the story. Carnage is an inmate at the Ravencroft Institute, basically Marvel's Arkham Asylum, and he finds out that a game publisher is creating an online multiplayer game called Carnage Unleashed. Of course, it's 1995, so video game violence is a huge issue. In fact, I'm pretty sure Larry Hama was writing this as the 1994 congressional hearings were happening that established the ESRB. So, what do you think the publisher releasing Carnage Unleashed was called? That's right, the Excessive Violence Video Game Company. Yeah, not very subtle. The words video game company are in the, in the name of their name video game of company. The company. Yes. So anyway, Carnage is pissed when he hears about this because he's not going to see any royalties. It's our game, named after me. It's all about what I did. Still, the Extreme Violence video game company has agreed to allow him beta access and to play as himself. Dr. Kafka is the administrator of Ravencroft, and I love her line here. Perhaps we should curtail Cassidy's gaming privileges. Meanwhile, Venom learns about this game through this ad on the side of a building, and he's also pissed, mostly for it existing and glorifying Carnage to begin with. If you look at this ad, you can tell it's pretty much a reference to Maximum Carnage, which came out in September 1994, which again would have been very contemporary with when Larry Hama was writing this. You can also see a hint of the Paint the Town Red slogan, plus that it's available for the Super NES and Seva Genesis. So back to Carnage having access to the game. Again, he's super pissed at the developers for not giving him any money for his involvement, so being Carnage, he decides he needs to kill them. And as luck would have it, he discovers a new symbiote power. I was about to extend my other arena, molecular monofilament, right through the RGB screen, through the processor and the modem, down the phone line, past the switching stations, up your clank line into your modem and processor. I your LGB screen. All right, we could stop it there. So basically, the symbiote has the power to enter a computer yeah. and go through the internet. Uh -huh. Through the screen? Yes, through the screen. Like physically through the screen. The RGB screen, it's very specific. Yeah. Luckily, but modern anyway. OLED screens are symbiote proof. So, a bunch of stuff happens with the corrupt CEO of Extreme Violence saying this will be great publicity for the game and crap like that. And my personal favorite, deciding on a whim to release the game widely at midnight that same day. But eventually, Venom gets involved, discovers that he too can enter cyberspace with his symbiote, and the climax happens with Venom and Carnage slugging it out in-game on the big screen in Times Square for everyone to watch. Some of my favorite 90s dialogue during their fight. Vanderhoff. Nice name. Not. <laughs> stupid is stupid does miss blue. 
That's right. Forrest Gump had just come out. <laughs> and Cletus had, had gone to see it. <laughs> yes, he did. I can't say I really understand what Venom does to get them out of there. Something about destroying the heat sink in the Times Square monitor. But it forces Carnage back into the real world at the computer he entered from. And then his therapist sets him on fire and he falls out of a skyscraper and he's taken into custody again. Comics, people! But I haven't even mentioned this stuff about modern gaming yet. And it all comes from our friends at the Extreme Violence Video Game Company. First, the game concept. It's an online multiplayer game where one player is Carnage and 20 other players are superheroes trying to take him down. We actually get screenshots of Carnage fighting Venom, Captain America, and Spider-Man. What does this sound like? Asymmetric well, the gameplay. Yes. I don't think that existed back then, did it? Huh. Not in video game form. I don't I know of. Certainly not as a term, no. So, well, I mean, were there any games that played like that, where you were one guy against a whole bunch of other dudes trying to get you, or, or vice versa? I don't think, think so. No. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So Larry Hama invented asymmetric. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have this amazing conversation that combines extreme 90s dialogue with an inaccurate picture of the later days of the 16-bit console era. The Game Boy version was pretty cool. The 16-bit Super NES and Genesis versions were even cooler, and the 32-bit arcade version was killer to the max. But this interactive version is going to sweep away the competition like a Terminator on steroids. Yes, because apparently the Game Boy, SNES, Genesis, and arcade versions were not interactive. I like how they have a uh, TM after each of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> and remember earlier, it was the, the Siva Genesis or something. Uh, yeah, also check out the fast food joint. It's Woody's. This also predicted who would play Carnage in Woody's 25 years later. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the real prediction, and it's arguably two in one. We get the players booked for free and then uh, charging the limit for the modules and codes to access the higher levels of play. There it is. This, of course, is free-to-play and microtransactions. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we had shareware and stuff like that back then, but it, it was not really the same thing as, as free-to-play, which it sounds to me is what he's proposing here. Charge yeah. the limit. Can you guys think no, of anything? That, 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 well, 100 carnage bucks. <laughs> That's right. It's really too bad Carnage killed these guys. Who knows how much more innovation they could be bringing to the table these days. That is insane. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty cool, I think. That's not, no, it's, it's, that's pretty <laughs> legitimate. Kind of, you know, forward. Yeah. Looking. Uh, Yet so off the mark. Wrap up the beta testing, Sherm. This baby goes on the net tonight at midnight. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was talking about earlier. Yeah, so they're so they're hours from release and they're still beta testing. Yep, that's what that's what, that's, <laughs> that's how it works. You know, on a whim, he said it was on a whim. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's I mean there's on a whim and then there's on that's a whim. A lot of confidence that excessive Carnage, violence video. Carnage, games. Uh, I want excessive so violence in the in like the world in Spider Man uh, that Insomniac does. Like, oh, there could be the good. excessive violence building. I mean, we have it in. We should, uh, yeah, yeah we should call <laughs> Brian about. We should call Brian right here. They're going to shadow um, drop it. Yeah. Wow. But uh, maybe that's an innovation I didn't actually... Uh, oh. <laughs> that is eventually... Shadow dropping happens on a whim all the time. Like, yeah, you know, right. You don't plan for it. You just decide it's like 6 o'clock at night. And, you know, let's, let's release this at midnight. Why not? That's right. Just, these are all the beta testers because they have these beta testers like on this, uh, this Zoom call. Basically. Oh, Jai Zoom call. Yeah, yeah. Zoom call. Yeah, yeah. They, they seem to have completely abandoned this power in the comic. <laughs> I wonder why. 